to say, God, I may live again. The precious Lamb of God. Help me hold the Lamb. The precious Lamb of God. Born to say. Lamb of God, holy is the Lamb, the precious Lamb of God. Why you love me so, Lord, I shall never know the precious Lamb of God. Lamb of God, why you love me so, Lord, I shall never know the precious Lamb of God. Now behold the Lamb, the precious Lamb.
everybody thank you for the lamb the precious lamb of God he was born into sin that I might live again hallelujah why he loves me I can never know. I can never understand. Somebody say, I owe a debt I could not pay, but he paid a debt he did not owe. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. That is law. Thank you precious Lamb of God thank you for loving us thank you for being good to us thank you for being our King thank you for being our Savior oh we gather this morning to say thank you anybody has a praise this morning, raise your voice and tell the Lord, thank you. Thank you oh, somebody tell him, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. If you are thank grateful you, that he kept you, thank you Jesus. lift your voice and say, Lord, I'm grateful. Lord, I'm grateful. Hallelujah. I'm grateful. Father, we are thankful. Father, we thank you. Father, we're grateful, Jesus. We are grateful. We're grateful, Jesus. You didn't have to do it, but you did it. You didn't have to wake us up this morning, but you did it. We give you glory. Lord, we give you all. In the midst of our calamity, we thank you, Jesus. You kept us. In the midst of our fear, oh, Lord, you protected us. Hallelujah. And we've stopped by this morning to say, to say thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, Lord, my God. When I 
seen of some wonder can say the all the works your hand of me I see the stars Lord I hear the rolling Of acclamation, and take me home. What joy shall fill my heart? Everybody give him praise this morning. We serve a great God. We serve a mighty God. Amen. Amen. We glad to also have back in service this morning Deacon Dave Williams, who underwent surgery. Sometimes ago, we are glad he's back in his good health and he's worshiping with us. God bless you, my son. The Lord is your strength. The Lord is your portion in Jesus' name. Amen. Put those hands together for Jesus one more time. Turn with me in your Bibles. In the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 17. Matthew, chapter 17. 
Beginning at verse number 14, we find these words recorded. And when they were come to the multitude, there came to him a certain man kneeling down to him and saying, Lord, have mercy on my son, for he is lunatic and so vexed. For of times he falleth into the fire and up into the water. And I brought him to thy disciples, and they could not kill him. Then Jesus answered and said, O faithless, faithless and perverse generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I suffer you? Bring him hither to me. And Jesus rebuked the devil, and he departed out of him, and the child was killed from that very hour. 19. Then came the disciples of Jesus apart and said, Why could not we cast him out? And Jesus said unto them, Because of your unbelief. For verily I say unto you, If ye have faith as a grain of mustard seed, ye shall say unto this mountain, Remove hands to yonder place, and it shall remove, and nothing shall be impossible unto you. Finally, verse 21. How be it? This kind goeth not out but by prayer and fasting. Heavenly Father, we ask your blessings upon these words again this morning. We pray that you will speak to each and every one of us in ways that we would better understand you. Encourage us through thy word of truth. Build our faith that we trust you more. And I pray, O oh Lord, that none of us will leave from here the same way we came including those who have joined us in the way of social media. We pray that this blessing will reach out to every one of them. And we will glorify you. In Jesus' name we pray. Everybody say amen. You may be seated. God bless you. A while ago, I was speaking along the lines of using Jesus as our ultimate model in everything that we do if we expect to succeed. And it follows the principle that if you are fascinated by the things, especially the miraculous things that happen in the lives of men and women who lived in Bible days, there is a simple principle, a very simple principle. When you read about Daniel, you read about Moses, you read about Esther, you read about Elijah, you read about the apostles, and you become fascinated by the miraculous things that God did in their lives. The simple principle and concept here is this. Do what the date 
if you want to get what they got. Can you say that with me? Do what they did. No, your voice is sounding. It's by far lower than your number. So sound like the number of people that are here in this building. Do what they did. If you want to get what they got. One more time. If you want to get what they got, then do what they did. Amen. All right. If you want what they got, do what they did. Because the principles of God are forever established and unchanged. The promises of God are beautiful for every generation and in every situation. And as I read along these lines talking about modeling Jesus, using him as our ultimate model, with the, uh, beside considering great men and women who lived in Bible times, I realized that one of the greatest virtue that has always formed a part of the men and women that God have used in the Bible and even contemporary times is that these have been people who humbled themselves. Everybody say humility. They humbled themselves. Now, humility, being humble, is the opposite of being proud or pompous. Oh, you're too big, nobody can get to you. You've made yourself so important that even when it comes to dealing with God, you think you are doing God a favor when you, when you serve him. Moses was an awesome servant of God. Astounding miracles were wrought through his hand. And he became one of the greatest leaders of God's people. Whose example that many who want to excel in spiritual leadership are still following today. Yet, the Bible tells us that Moses was a very humble man. He was meek. There was no one that was as meek and as humble as Moses. But reading the scripture, I realized Another way that humility or humbleness is described in the word of God is when believers chose to set time aside to seek the face of God in a time of fasting and prayer. So every time people fasted and prayed, it was another expression of humility. In Psalm 35, in verse 13, David said, But as for me, when they were sick, my clothing was sackcloth. Now putting on sackcloth in Bible days was indicative of somebody who decided to commit himself to 
the fasting and praying. In the old times, when people were fasting and praying, it was easy to tell that they were fasting and praying. They wore sack clothes. It means they didn't wear attractive wearing. The clothes they wore were old clothes. Sometimes it got some holes in it. When people wore sack clothes, it was an indication that they were humbling themselves to seek the face of God in fasting and praying. Even though in the New Testament, Jesus changed that. He said, wear better clothing. Anoint yourself with oil so that you don't appear to man as one who is fasting, but that you will appear to God who sees in secret, in secret and reward openly. But then it said, when they were sick, my clothing was sackcloth. I humbled my soul with fasting. That's what he said. I humbled my soul with fasting. So humility and fasting are synonymous. Somebody following me. I humbled my soul with fasting and my prayer returning to my bosom. An indication that the prayers that were prayed with fasting were answered. And one of the greatest scriptures on the subject of humility Fasting and prayer found in the Bible is in that timeless passage of scripture in the book of Second Chronicles chapter 7 and verse 14, which I'm sure many of you have committed to memory and you can say by heart. This is what God said. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray. So if you want to put the scripture now in context, what God is saying here is, if my people who are called by my name will fast and pray. Because that's why humility is. If they will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. God said, then I will hear from heaven and I will forgive their sin and I will heal the land. So when the Bible says humble themselves, it doesn't mean you should just wear bad clothing and say, well, I am so humble. Look how I'm dressed with sackcloth. It is actually referring to the scriptural way of humbling yourself through fasting described by the psalmist David in Psalm 35 and verse 13. A humble my soul with fasting. That's what he said. So the deal here is this. God wants us to humble ourselves. Individually. As individual believers. And corporately as a church. A body of believers. He wants us to humble ourselves, to pray, to seek his face, and not just his hand. Many times believers' prayers are directed only at the hand of God, but not at his face. 
the difference between seeking his face and seeking his hand is this simple. Those who are seeking his hand, they only want to be blessed. They only want financial blessing. They're seeking his hand. They want material blessing. They're seeking just his hand. They want physical blessing, healing when they are sick. They're seeking what's in his hand. But those who are seeking his face do not come to him just for what they can get from him. Those who are seeking his face, they have an inward desire to get closer to him, to know him more, to experience a deeper level of closeness or intimacy with the Lord. When they come in his presence, their prayer is not just, Lord, give me money, Lord, heal my body, but they come and say, Lord, I want to know you better. Like the apostle Paul, they pray and say, that I may know you in the power of your resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering. They want to know him more. They want to be more acquainted with him. And I, I, I'm here to declare this morning, God is happy with us when we desire to know him more. Amen. We come to seek him, but we're not just seeking his hands, we are seeking his face. And the reason why this is important is there are many people who have gotten physical blessing as a, as a result of the manifestation of the good hand of God in their lives, but they are still far from God. There are many things about God that they are ignorant about because they have not been interested in seeking his faith. So the psalmist David said, Lord, when you say, seek my face, my heart said, Lord, your face, oh God, will I seek. Hallelujah. There is a difference between people who are chasing after blessing and those who are chasing after God. And it is my prayer this morning that in these last days in which we find ourselves, God, by his spirit, will invigorate within each of us the desire to be God chasers and not just miracle seekers. To share with you before, a couple of years back, the Shabana was still alive and then he would send me from one church to another in the United States, preaching revival here, then yonder, and one of those times, I was fasting and praying, and God woke me up in the middle of the night, and he said, tell my people. I was in Columbia, South Carolina. And I remember, I still remember. He said, tell my people. Many times, they come seeking for fame, but they are not seeking for me. But tell them, if they seek for me and find me, the rest of the things that they need will follow. Isn't that in line with Matthew chapter 6 and verse 33, what the Bible says, but seek ye first. Everybody say, first thing first. Many of us got our priorities wrong or misplaced priorities. He says, 
but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things that you are seeking will be added unto you. The rest of these things will follow. So desire to know him more. Anybody wants to know him more this morning? Anybody wants to get a little more closer to him? Say, Lord, it is my desire to know you. It is my desire to honor you. With all my heart, I worship you. And with all that is within me, Lord, I give you praise. Lord, all that I adore is in you. Lord, I give you my heart. I give you my soul. And I'll live for you alone. Now I like this part of the song. It says, every breath that I take and every moment that I am awake, Lord, have your will in me. Somebody say amen. Hallelujah. So God wants us to humble ourselves. Seek his face. Turn from our wicked ways or repent of our sin. And when we do for his part, this is what he promised. He said, I will hear their prayer. I will forgive their sins. And I will heal the land. Amen, somebody. Hallelujah. In the passage we read in Matthew is one of those passages that I believe God has used over the years to teach every believer, especially New Testament saints, that they are setting prayers that you pray and they can be answered in a jiffet. A lot may not be required to get certain answers. But we are taught in this passage that there are some other problems and challenges that are very humongous they are tasks that are considered Herculean in nature not just something that anybody can just easily overcome and when you face such situation we are admonished in the scripture to not only pray but combine prayer with fasting. Is somebody hearing me? Hallelujah. And during the ministry of Jesus. When Jesus would cast out demons, one of the reasons why he did that was most of the problems that were evident in the lives of people that could be seen. With one's eyes, there were problems which were physical evidence of some spiritual forces demonic forces to be specific amen so when a demonic force is responsible for a particular problem that's in the life of an individual 
once that demon remains safe, secured, and unnoticed, the devil is happy because that that problem will persist. So there are certain physical infirmities that are clear indication that there is an evil spirit that has been tormenting this person. So when Jesus healed the sick, many times he cast out demons. So when the demons left, those problems could not remain. Is somebody understanding what I'm saying this morning? Because if the demon is responsible for a particular physical infirmity and that demon is not noticed so that it can be expelled or exorcised, that person remains in bondage to that demonic incarceration. Now, this is what Jesus said in Mark chapter 16, verse 17. He said, And these signs shall follow them that believe. Who are these signs going to follow? Who will they follow? Jesus said, And these signs shall do what? They will follow them that believe there are several signs he mentioned there he said in my name they shall cast out devils they shall speak with new tongues speaking in tongues is a sign that follow believers that is when we become baptized in the holy spirit god gives us the supernatural ability to speak in a language not previously learned and also unknown to the speaker. He said they will cast out devils. They will take up serpent. And if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. But let me minimize what I want to say demonic influence that is responsible for the troubles in the lives of believers. So when demons are cast out, the victim experiences deliverance and relief from physical infirmities and other activities that had kept that person in bondage. So part of our God-giving commission as ambassadors of the gospel and of reconciliation is our importation of grace and anointing to cast out evil spirits. That was what Jesus did. The Bible says he went everywhere doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil. So as kingdom ambassadors, wherever we are, our commission to cast out demons extend to wherever we are and wherever we go. And this is what I believe that demons will remain comfortably seated and located in a particular vessel as long as no one is willing to trouble them. And the devil likes it too. Do you know there can be some demonic demonic manipulations in homes, in marriages. Husband and wife can't see eyeball to eyeball. 
they are fighting every day because there is a demon, a spirit of confusion that has been released. So there's no peace. But this is what the devil does. He blinds their eyes to what the demon is doing and he opens their eyes to one another. And you know, as long as we are fighting one another, we are sure not fighting the devil. Because the scripture says, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood but against principalities against powers against the rulers of the darkness of this world and spiritual weakness in high places spiritual weakness infiltrate into families into homes and everybody is fighting and looking at one another and saying he is a bad guy or she is a bad person and the devil is saying I'm so glad nobody knows I am the one doing it. He has a remote control. You know when somebody got remote control? The switching channels, and you don't know the remote control in their hand? Remote control, you may be watching a nice movie, everybody is happy, all of a sudden, somebody remotely changed this, the channel to something horrible that brings fear. But you don't know who got the remote control. Demonic spirits are remotely controlling things in the lives of people. But it takes those who got spiritual discernment to say, hey, this is the work of the devil. So that they can begin to direct they are attack at the devil and not at their brothers and sisters. Because the devil can be the force. And listen to this. As ambassadors of the kingdom of God, we are carriers of good news. We are carriers of hell. In Proverbs 13 and 17, the Bible says, A wicked messenger falls into trouble, but a faithful ambassador brings health. And I feel that the body of Christ is moving. And indeed, we are at that level of corporate authority and individual authority to cast out evil spirits from individual and also from neighborhoods, from houses and from entire community including our nation. Amen. Now what's happening in Liberia Many of them may not appreciate what is happening. But do you know that there were years, many years, that Liberia never pointed to someone and said, this is a former president. This is a former president. Do you know that? All former presidents were dead presidents. Maybe you haven't been thinking about it. Zealand, they are killed in a coup d'etat. Some of them that died, they die of sicknesses and disease. So you couldn't count and say, this guy who's working over there is a former president. It didn't happen for a long time in Liberia. And we realized there were other countries that have former presidents living. We went to God in prayer and we began to do battle against that demonic power that was behind our presidents always dying. And today, at least we got two former presidents living, for God's sake. But like I said a while ago, these demons will remain comfortable as long as nothing is done to shake their base. 
you don't shake them, you don't trouble them, they are happy because they will comfortably hide themselves and they will keep on doing havoc. Evil spirits are real. And they have a commission. Their commission is to torment humanity. But our commission is to take up the cross and follow after Jesus daily. And as we follow him, we find ourselves doing what he did. What did Jesus come to do? Jesus came to break every yoke, many forms of demonic oppression and influence. We yield to the anointing of the word of command spoken by spirit-filled believers. However, now this is a however. Probably going to conclude on this note. However, there are certain demonic obstacles or strongholds that won't break until we are willing and ready to combine prayer with fasting we do that we tap into the power of the spirit just as the lord jesus did the bible says at the inception of the ministry of jesus he was led by the spirit into the wilderness and there he fasted and prayed then afterwards the bible says he returned in the power of the spirit Returning in the power of the Spirit indicates that at that point when demons saw him, they fled. There are demons that can go without much resistance if believers learn how to commit themselves to a time of prayer and fasting. Many people think this is old time stuff I'm talking about. Well, God it's not learning. We are the ones who are learning. So we say, well, I think God needs to learn. And <laughs> listen, God knew everything from beginning to ending. So there's nothing he's learning. We say, well, at this point in time, fasting and prayer was used those days to deal with chronic demonic problem. Now, you know, in these modern times, everybody is learning. So let, let, let's learn new things. Now, friend, what you needed to know about casting out demons and getting answers to prayer, God has already made them known in the Bible. <laughs> if you think we are in modern times, so things are changing, times are changing, there are certain things that are not going to change. And one of those things is fasting and praying. And it is my earnest conviction that real, serious-minded believers who have a real relationship with God are those who take our time every now and then to fast and pray. Even if the church doesn't announce it. Those who are not serious, even if the church announces it, they highlight it, they didn't hear it. Jesus went through a period of 40 days, 40 nights. Scripture declared that he returned in the power of the Spirit. Now, if we are not willing to fast and pray, there will come times that there will be extreme resistance to spiritual authority. This extreme resistance to spiritual authority can sometimes be seen in cases of chronic addictions. That people have been hooked to. They just can't break them. Some are chronic drunkenness. Chronic alcoholism. They are getting poor because they are drinking a lot, but they don't know how to stop. The money that they would have used to build a house, 
they have drunk and they are still living in somebody's rented room. You see how bad the devil is. Chronic drug addiction. These are controlled by spirits. Homosexuality. Witchcraft and occult involvement. Some people have the spirit of suicide. They wake up in the middle of the night and they are thinking about taking their own life. You think it's normal? There is a spirit behind that. Many young people have killed themselves. Some things you call stress. Yeah, some stress, they are demonically orchestrated. People reach a point in their lives where they feel they have taken too much and they can take it no more and the only solution, the thing they, they can find is to kill themselves. People take overdoses of pills. Say this is how to end a miserable life. Some go over bridges and plunge themselves headlong. Repeated problems in people's life and then the devil whispers to them and say, just finish this whole thing. Throw yourself into the river and drown yourself. And that's it. The spirit of suicide is demonic. Is somebody hearing what I'm saying? The young people are getting themselves involved in occult activities. Drug is killing our young people. They have lost their mind. Depression, rebellion, lawlessness. I've often seen this kind of stronghold also associated with the curse of poverty. When an individual or family is struggling under this kind of demonizing influence, they will find out that no matter how much money they earn, their finances always seem to dwindle away through an unbroken string of either accident, we're happy, take their money, car repair joblessness, calamities, all manner of sickness that will cause you to never save money. It's a spirit. It is a curse of poverty. And we have to face them. Other than that, we come to that place where we feel we are just almost helpless. There's another area that is often resistant to normal prayers for believers. What I'm doing this morning, I want us to go beyond just normal praying. Let's do some fasting and praying every now and then. Another area that is often Resistant to normal prayer is in the area of chronic diseases. Some diseases such as cancer, HIV and AIDS virus. A few years ago, we experienced the Ebola hemorrhage fever that killed thousands of people. Some forms of mental illnesses, they all carry such a paralyzing weight of fear and invincibility that Christians who are under these bondages almost feel like they are helpless. No effort exerted can give them any guarantee solution. And I understand their feelings of frustration, but I also know from Scripture that even these deadly and chronic demonic strongholds must bow their knees 
So the, the, the authority of our raising Lord and Savior when believers are not just praying casually, but when we get ready to fast and pray. This Wednesday, I'm challenging everyone here to join me in here in a time of fasting and prayer. Fast and prayer. There are some, some chronic situations that we are praying normal prayers and they are still looking at us like they didn't hear us. And I remember I'm closing the different times in ministry growing up when I witnessed series of supernatural occurrences that could only be attributed to divine intervention as a result of fasting and prayer. I will give you just one, one instant. Mr. Bonner sent me to go and preach a revival in Detroit, Michigan. It was in the, around 20, 20, 2010, 2014, between 2010 to 2013, 2014 that time. But I still remember very vividly after every time when I preach, I make an altar call and we pray with people at the altar. And a young lady came to the altar. She was like, I think she was like in her 20s, 22, 23, or 24, like that. When we're praying, the Spirit of God was moving and that young lady started manifesting demonic activities. You could tell that there was a demonic situation. So when I, while I was praying for other people, few of the ministers and some of the missionaries, they took the young lady and carried her to the upper room so that they can attend to her privately. But when the service ended, and I was talking with few people right at the front of the altar, two of them ran downstairs to me and said, Bishop Zawa, you got to come quick. When I ran upstairs in the upper room, the scene that I saw there was chaotic. This lady was very violent. That the few men that were there that went to pray for her, when she started manifesting, she would open her mouth to talk, but the sound you were hearing out of her mouth was not a sound of a lady, like a very wicked man is talking. Oh, who are you? And so those guys who wanted to pray, they were saying the blood of Jesus, but they stood at a distance and they were like this, the blood of Jesus. You know, that kind of fearful, you don't even get results with that kind of fear. They didn't want to get close to her. Every attempt to hold her down proved futile. She has such strength that those brethren couldn't contend with her. The demon that possessed that sister was speaking with a male voice, growling sound. Sometimes like a beast was inside her. And blessingly, I had been fasting and praying the week before, and that very week I was fasting when I went into that revival. I became angry in the spirit. And the first thing I did was I went closer to her. They were afraid. They were standing far, but I went closer to her. You reach a particular level in the spirit, you are not afraid because of spiritual preparation. And I said, come out of her. And the demon in the lady said, why? Ask me why. And I said, this must be a serious situation now. It wasn't the lady talking, it was the demon talking. And I said, you are asking why? Because Jesus has given me authority and power to cast you out. He says, signs that's supposed to follow me is to cast out devil. So right now, I command you in the name of Jesus, come out of her. Now look, watch my hand. I stretch my hand like this. And 
the way I used my hand, it was with such a force, such a force, the demon came out of that lady. But I'm telling you, few days after that, this hand was painting like I took some kind of, like I lifted a 500 pound weight on this hand for, 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 for 10 minutes. But I was so angry, I stretched in. said, come out of her in Jesus' name. Demon went out of her, and then this girl, who apparently, if you didn't know, you said, well, men were talking through her. She started crying, and she started thanking Jesus with the softest and the most pleasant voice of a lady you could ever hear. What happened to that demonic voice? It was gone. And I can give you one instance after another. But let me close. We'll continue another day. Believers must be interested in not just seeking the hand of God. Let us seek his face as well. Don't you know if your child is sick at home, you have enough authority to lay your hands on that child and say, Devil, I rebuke you, leave my child. Don't you know you have that authority? You need to stir that authority up when you begin to fast and pray. Stand with me in Jesus' name. Oh, there is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. Oh, yes, it is to break every chain, 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 break every chain. Oh, there is power in the name of Jesus there is power in the name of Jesus yeah. to break every chain to break, break every, every chain. chain break every chain break every chain break every chain Break every chain. Oh, there's an army rising up. You are part of that army. Oh, there's an army rising up. Break every chain. Break every chain. Break every chain. Come on, break every chain. To break every chain. Break every chain. Break every chain. Sing there's an army. There's an army rising. The army with the power of the Holy Ghost. There's an army rising. There's an army, there's an army 
right now Amen. Amen. I make this place an arena of terror to every demonic activity Amen. we make this place uncomfortable Amen. for demons to abide right now because of the anointing and the power that's in the name of Jesus. Amen. Everyone who came here this morning bound by forces of the evil, by demonic incarceration, I speak in the name of Jesus and I command every yoke of demonic power over your life be destroyed right now. Amen. Be destroyed right now. Every demonic activity responsible for sicknesses and diseases. I command those demons. Check out now. Amen. Check out in Jesus' name. Amen. Check out in Jesus' name. Amen. Go in Jesus' name. Amen. We destroy your power. We destroy every contention of evil in the mighty name of Jesus. Jesus I command cancer to be healed. Amen. You spirit of cancer, I curse you from the roots. I curse you from the roots. I command you to die. Die by fire. The curse of poverty. Maso pray you can't alabaya. Mama, 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 mama. I plead the blood of Jesus. The blood that was shed on Calvary. The blood that stained the old rugged cross. I plead that living blood right now against every curse, against the curse of poverty, against every crippling infirmity. In the name of Jesus. The curse of death. The people that the devil has targeted to kill. I come against you right now in the name of Jesus. Amen. I destroy your power right now in the name of Jesus. Amen. Oh, I declare that brother, that sister shall not die. She shall live to declare the works of the Lord. That accident that the enemy are planned with your name written on it. I erase your name in the name of Jesus. Amen. And I cover you with the blood of Jesus. I cover your family with the blood of Jesus. I cover your children with the blood of Jesus. Receive his anointing. 
receives power in Jesus' name. And everyone who loves him shall glory. Put those hands together, give God praise in the house. Hallelujah. Hey! Hear the chains falling. The chains of bondage are falling. The chains of sickness, they are falling. The chains of chronic infirmity, they are falling. The chains of chronic addiction, alcoholism, I hear them falling. Fall. Fall. Break. Break, fall, break, break, in the name of Jesus, amen, give God praise everybody, hallelujah, quickly, 